So even I think I expected after Neil and Nikki that I would be in every film. Yeah. But uh, I think we, like I said, we missed. We all were the the one the audience we appealed to. We're not the audience that were going into the theaters and buying the tickets, unfortunately. So you know now we have a better understanding of that. I was never brought up to compare myself with my sister, and I think your upbringing matters the most. Yeah. Like I said. the women in my family were not brought we were not brought up with ideas of comparison hmm. like i would say bollywood is a part of our culture correct it's a part of our upbringing today i want to dress like a simran or i want hmm. to behave like a anjali you know i want to do those things hi i'm tanisha mukherjee and you're watching peeping moon everyone welcome to peepingmoon.com i am rashita sahani and you're watching me on rush talks now my guest today is someone who's very special she has various roles to play and she has done all of that wonderfully an actress a reality tv star and now an environmentalist welcoming tanisha mukherjee hi tanisha how have you been i've been good and thank you so much for such a lovely introduction you're most welcome i was actually very intrigued because i have heard actors say this a lot that when we act we don't get time for anything else but then we saw various uh, you know facets of your life you were an actor you still are and then you went into the reality space and now of course this ngo that's doing incredible work tell me more about it uh i think uh, when actors say we get time for nothing else that's because they have dedicated themselves to only being actors and i think that was one of the things that i i don't know if i was able to or just was not able ever to do i was always uh, I was always had these other my hand in other pots, you know, and I always enjoyed that. Like whether it was interiors or whether it was, you know, so always something creative. Because mm. I think when I started out as an actress, um, there's a lot of struggle, and for me, it was like I was so comfortable that I was not used to that struggle. So it was like my creativity needed an outlet. Yeah. so my creativity just went like okay uh, this film is not getting giving me the creativity let me try theater let me try this let me try that let me try everything that will give my creativity that production <laughs> correct so i think that's uh, that's why i've been able to do what i've been able to do and just try many things okay and coming from a filmy family was acting always you know on your platter that i need to try this one day yeah definitely and um, like my grandmom said do it when you're young yeah so that uh, but i think for me it was like unfortunately i looked a little too young yeah. <laughs> when i started <laughs> and i remember even when i did neel and nikki people were like oh my god she's so tiny she looks so young yeah. and i was like oh, okay so it became like i started appealing to the 15 year olds unfortunately Correct. but um, but yeah so i think it was it was good advice i did it and i enjoyed it and i've i'm still doing it for yeah. And I feel like it. You mentioned Neil and Nikki, and I remember that film changed the fashion ball game because <laughs> everyone wanted to look like Nikki, be like Nikki. Oh. Those low waist skirts and those bikini tops, all of that was just so trending. You made it trending back then. You know how they call the Y two K fashion now, and it was back then yeah. in I think two thousand four or five when it came out. Yeah. yeah. So how did it feel back then when you know it was suddenly out there everyone was wanting to be that So I can't take full credit for uh, giving that fashion because yeah. I mean my dress designer the of designer course. you know uh, Sanjeev Mulchan he was superb and then of course Adi was the one who kind of when we did our first photo shoot pushed me to mm -hmm. get that kind of body Yeah like he basically told me he's like I don't even want an inch of fat on you and it was like you know it was like something just clicked in my brain and it was like that inspiration that mm. i needed to get that level of fitness at that time which nobody had yeah. achieved and i think that's what made the outfits look the way they did that's what gave the the film the energy that it did and i think that's what a lot of the kids mm. loved because i looked like a kid yeah, also yeah, you know? yeah. like everything was flat you had no curves you were just like this totally fit bod mm. So I think the kids just love that, and uh, we kind of missed our target audience. From fifteen became twelve, and yeah. five-year-olds were loving yeah. our clothes. Yeah. And today those five-year-olds are like, you know, I know. I was wearing eight. them <laughs> back oh then. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah so. But uh, yeah, I remember my sister and I playing dress up and trying to look like something like Nikki with whatever we had in our wardrobes, and uh, yeah, we still laugh about that thing. That wow, we were so like into it. I think it's the color. 
Yeah. I loved the color, yeah. the color combinations exactly. and the whole film was so the bright. Palette, yeah. And yeah, I know. Was, it was lovely. I know. But you know, I personally expected you to be in every film after that. I thought, okay. <sighs> Uh, and I didn't know your real name. I thought, okay, Nikki will be there in this and that oh and that. Gosh. And then, of course, I grew up and I watched you in Big Boss and in all the other things in Khatro. So, what what went there and why was there like a lot of break in between your projects? So, even I think I expected after Neil and Nikki that I would be in every film. Yeah. But uh, I think we, like I said, we missed. You all were the, the one, the audience we appealed to. We're not the audience that were going into the theatres and buying the tickets, unfortunately. So, you know, now we have a better understanding of that. And um, I think that's why uh, somewhere there was that break because it was like suddenly, you know, and I, and I did. I got, I got a, actually a great opportunity in the South. Yeah. Right after Neil and Nikki, which was Onale Onale, which I did, which was a great film. I know. And uh, I loved working in that film. But that was, again, my only South film, my only Tamil film. And then I did another film, which was also a Telugu film. So I think I got the opportunities away from Hindi. Um, but that was okay with me. Yeah. It was, um, I wasn't, uh, I think you just have to like find your balance and find your space. Correct. And I think at that point, I didn't know how to fight against all the negative publicity that went around the the film you know yeah. there was a lot of negative publicity that went around the film because it was a bit jarring correct for people at that time and it was way ahead of its time definitely for sure yeah. like you said you were eight years old and you loved it five-year-olds and people took their five-year-olds to see the film yeah. right and then they were like oh my god this is too I much know, i can't I expe know. expose my five-year-old to, to this. this correct but so that was our audience and I guess now times are different, the world yeah. has changed and I think that was the whole disconnect. Looking at it from an objective yeah. point of view later on in life, it's very easy to say this now. Correct. But at that point, I was just like, I never understood what was happening. I was like, why? Why are people like so, I know. you know, uh, like sensitive maybe. Yeah. And also so, so I was brought up in a very open minded, progressive women dominated family yeah. right and very strong women so when I did that role I never thought of it like oh my god I'm exposing too much yeah I never thought of it like that I was like I'm fit I've got like that you cannot see an ounce of fat on mm. me I'm so like strong I was doing I was running an hour a day I was doing yeah. weight training I was like I was at the top of my game so I was like why are people like what am I wearing that's so wrong yeah. I'm wearing you know like I'm looking I Amazing. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was my whole episode over there. I was just like, I was very like confused. I didn't understand yeah. why people were so like, then I realized that when they see Hindi film heroines, they like to see the heroine as, you know, the, know. <clears throat> now things are changing. Sari, but like a sexy sari. <laughs> sexy sari, yes. Sari, but like a sexy sari. You yeah. hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, how much ever progressive as a society we call ourselves, that part is still there. Like, I remember an actress wearing like a, a high slitted gown at a, an award show and it becoming like a problem. How is that a problem? It's still, it's still happening. How sad is it? See, the way I look at it is you are going to get that kind of yeah. response. But when I did Neil and Nikki, hmm. and I'll use this in the most... Uh, because it's the best example. I was not ashamed of what I was huh, doing. Correct. And that I think comes across. Yeah. I did it with like, oh, at no point did I feel like, Arey, meine kya pehna hai? you know, I was like, oh my God, I'm loving what I'm wearing. Yeah. And I was happy. So I think your attitude and what you're wearing makes all the difference. Yeah. Um, and I know this is totally off topic, but unfortunately, this whole idea of um, how should I say, modesty mm. is a very English, Correct. British dominated concept Contra. in India. The British have given us modesty. The British have given us prudism. India is not, a, yeah. was not, never. we didn't even look at it as modesty exactly. because we never looked at it, we never sexualized our women like yeah. that. You know, we just looked at it as natural. Like 
somebody posted the other day my grandmother my great grandmother used to wear a sari without a blouse mm. never they didn't wear petticoats and blouses yeah, yeah. it was like they would just drape the five yards exactly. you know and it was so sensual and sexy and people were not like there was none of that um you know like lustful gaze right. and all of that it was very it was very open the indian society was very open so i think that's modesty is a unfortunate thing of the british that we now yeah inculcated yeah with. so yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it never will get back when the minds open up when we again go back to our culture pre british which i really promote a lot i love wearing sarees i love wearing sexy blouses i love you know i love like owning your own body i think as a woman any woman big small any size should just own her own body and mm-hmm. she will be the most beautiful woman in the world agreed completely um career wise you know i have heard and always seen people talk about how if they have a legacy to carry forward like you come from a filmy family there's like constantly an expectation that you have to be at people expect you to be like the greatest of an actor because you are tanuja ma'am's daughter and you know you are you are kajol's sister so th- those terms how did you take it as because very uh, proudly i have seen you never paying attention even you know in big boss there were comments like that and you were like very gracefully you tackled all of that i'm sure in real life also it must have happened because i was never brought up to compare myself with my sister and i think your upbringing matters the most yeah. like i said the women in my family were not brought we were not brought up with ideas of comparison hmm. we were all, we were seven cousins you know all girls living together you know enjoying together partying together getting out dressing up doing everything and we were all very individualistic like we were all individuals like if you see every one of us we all look different and i think we're all beautiful and uh, we were never compared like it was never like oh you're looking better in this outfit than she is yeah. or something like that so i think when i tell people i'm like those thoughts don't even come in my head because my upbringing like when i see somebody wearing something like i'm looking at you today and i'm looking at you and i'm thinking you're just beautiful like for a second i didn't look at your outfit yeah you know then i look at you and i'm like okay, okay. my thought is we're matching it's yeah, blue yeah yeah it's blue <laughs> you know what i mean these are the thoughts that come into my head and and i think that's just because of the conditioning it's the way i'm brought up so i was never made to compare which is why i think i was i was very difficult and i had a very difficult time in big boss yeah i just did not understand half of the time i never understood when people were being bitchy yeah. i never understood when somebody was saying something to me i just didn't get it i was like hey kyu keh rahi hai like yeah. why is she saying this and then i realized later on that's because in front of me she's saying something else but she said something else over and, there yeah. <laughs> and she's trying to show and i was like wow like that's just too much work and manipulation yeah, yeah. and i just can't do it <laughs> i have heard this a lot that people say big boss is not me- meant for people who are too real <laughs> it is it worked for me though yeah. i was very real and i think the people who liked me were the real people who got it yeah so but you having a hard time was because uh, of that but i think maybe. everybody has a hard time Yeah. Even the people who are fake have a hard time. Acha, okay. Everybody has have a hard time. Okay. That's just part of Big Boss. If you don't have a hard time, you've not gone into Big Boss. Okay. It's just part of it. But do you think that it sort of that reality show sort of also got you the much deserved limelight? Like people who were not from now, there's a different set of audience who go to watch films and different set of audience who watch watches Big Boss. They also, you know, sort of started connecting with you. Yeah, I think it was lovely for that. that for that reason i think it was totally worth it yeah because i suddenly saw like this entire like there were just so many people out there and that's the, i think that's the beauty of big boss also that they put in such characters that there is everybody in the mass everybody will connect with somebody in that house mm-hmm. you know? know so every character will come out saying my god i discovered people who would just come up to me and say oh my god i so related to yeah. you because exactly. they put those kind of people in so i did i loved it i found so many women out there who were so inspired by my journey they were so you know they so like kind of looked up to me yeah. and it was a little scary because i was like what have i done that you're looking up to me i've not really done yeah. anything but um, yeah and that's what actually gave me the idea to be more responsible towards my audiences correct that's what made me realize that what we show because 
India is a very different country. Indian audiences are not like any other audiences in the world. Yeah. We look at our actors and our stars and we kind of emulate them. We just, I mean, in the South, they worship them. But we also just really, they are, like I would say, Bollywood is a part of our culture. Correct. It's a part of our upbringing. Today, I want to dress like a Simran or I want mm. to behave like a Anjali. You know, I want to do those things because that is my learning on some level, right? So it's so important. That's when we realized after Big Boss that it was so important for me to choose the kind of roles yeah. where I'm giving my audiences that kind of learning, Correct. you know, and that kind of influence. So... Um, that was also one of the reasons I started my NGO Correct. because it was just, it was like, I need to give back and be more responsible. Was this thought of starting something for the environment and doing something always in your mind? Yes. It was, um, I always wanted to do something, I won't say the environment, hmm. but I've always been very like, I want to do something either okay. with children or with, you know, with something. And then something happened to me where I saw let's say, you know, progress, okay. destroying nature yeah. on some level in, very, in a very personal space for me. And that's when I realized that we need a new path. We need to understand because we are the generation that's going to make the change. Yeah. And today, the quality of air, the quality of our water, the quality mm -hmm. of our food, everything has been poisoned. Everything has been, you know, just polluted and destroyed because of corporatization. And I'm not saying progress is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it needs to go hand in hand. Correct. There needs to be a holistic progress. Mm. It can't just be pesa, pesa, pesa. It has to be log. It has to be people, people, people. Yeah. It has to be taking care of the people and at the same time, moving forward, making money, creating good things, but taking care of the people. Right. And somebody asked me a very interesting question. I was on a talk and they said, if you had a choice, would you choose people or the planet? What would you choose? Oh, my God, that's such a tough thing. I think I would choose the planet. See, that's where you're wrong. I'm an environmentalist and I said I would choose people. Because then they will help you. No, save because the planet. the planet is going to be here. The earth is not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. Planet Earth is much stronger than you and me. Correct. Planet Earth does not need people. Planet mm -hmm. Earth has seen the dinosaurs. They've seen the Ice Age. They've seen... Planet Earth has seen it all. Yeah. But the environment today that is around our planet, the environment, the air, the quality of the water, all of that is what needs... People need to survive. We need air to survive. Yeah. We need water to survive. And if you choose people, then you will help the planet. Yes. Because you yeah. need the environment. You need to clear the environment. You need to clean the environment for people to survive. So Definitely. that our children can be healthy. So that they're not dying of diseases. So that, you know, so that they're not getting skin cancer from the ozone layer depleting. And all of these things. So at the end of the day, you have to choose people. You yeah. can't choose the planet. planet. Planet's not going anywhere. Noted. <laughs> but... Um, you know, also as a public figure, as you said, you felt responsible. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes I feel there are a lot of people at the power of position not using it for good. Like, sometimes I feel if I had this, I would do this. And then I see, oh, people already have that, but they're not doing it. So there's like conflict of mindset there. So, you know, honestly, to get to a power, position of power hmm. takes a lot. Yeah. And by the time you get to that position of power, you have, I won't say diluted, but your mission gets diverted. Correct. Because you have so many other people you have to take care of. Because anybody in a position of power has many layers under them that they have to kind of support, they have to take care of, they have to look out for. So it gets diluted, you know, they can't help it. It's not their thing. That's why, you know, like... That's why they say give to charity mm. because they themselves are not able to make that change, right? 
So that's why you need the strong charitable institutions. You need people to start NGOs. Yeah. You need people to like get involved. And it's only people. Only yeah. people can make the change. One powerful person cannot make Not, change. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Two powerful people cannot create change. Hundreds and thousands of dollars or money cannot create change until the people, like, like I would say if my entire lane decided, there'd be change. Hmm. You know? Of course. That's it. There'd be change. Even if tomorrow my BMC fellow came here and said, Yeah, be badal do ye sab ye rule hai and all, nobody will change. Yeah. Nobody will Nobody. change. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> but if everybody on my road yeah. said, we are going to do it, then no BMC will need mm. to come also. Mm. They'll yeah. just automatically change. change. So it's it's the people who have to change. It's not any one powerful person who can do anything. Of course. On that note, being in the public eye, uh, I have seen celebrities go through scrutiny for the smallest and the tiniest of things. I remember a video of Kajol and you from that Durga Puja <laughs> Pandal. My God, I remember people making such a big that fuss about hilarious. it. That was hilarious. I was like, this is my sister and me every day at home. In public place also we start. We won't <laughs> see na camera hai ye hai. And how Tanuja ma'am coming in between like every mother are shant ho jau. But then... It was very, honestly, I uh, filed a copy on that saying that that's every sister ever. And a very fun copy. But a lot but of people did that. A lot of people. Yeah. But then I saw a section on the internet going and being like so gossipy about it. Uh, saying that, oh my God, they are fighting. They are not on good terms. And going into a very serious discussion about... I read news, big, big news portals filing such news. Really? Everything's not well between the sisters and all of that. And then I was like, I thought to myself, my God, they can't even do anything in the public uh, area where there are cameras because then people perceive it in a different manner. But we didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> that's the I best mean, part. That was like, the, that's my only answer <laughs> to this. Like, I didn't even know that big bottles had come yeah, out with yeah. this news. I did see a lot of this thing and I was like, wow, this is like, I, you know how I get those Google alerts. Mm. I was like, Kya ho hai? why are people going so crazy over this? Yeah. Because somebody had tweeted it to me. One of our fans had mm. only tweeted it to me saying, uh, oh my God, how cute. Look at these yeah. sisters being sisters. Yeah. And I had liked her tweet. And I, I mean, oh, because I do, I like mm. tweets, you know, and I'm quite, a, I'm quite active on social media. So yeah. I was like, oh, I like this tweet. Yeah. I liked that tweet. Uske baad I saw these like hundreds and thousands of like links with like <laughs> this Kajan and Tanisha, this fight. And I'm looking at her like, what is going on here? Like, what the hell is this? But we were just, we didn't care. You know, firstly, it was our Durga Puja. Hmm. Media came to our Durga Puja. Exactly. Hamare Durga Puja mein aake, hamare behavior pe aap comment kar rahe ho. Like, if we can't be normal in our own family environment, then when can we be normal? And I think, I love my sister and me for that. Hmm. That we will always be normal. Because I don't care about the lens that you're perceiving me by. That is your lens. Yeah. That is not the lens that I perceive my sister by. And I, she doesn't perceive me through news. Hmm. We have a relationship away from media, yeah. you know, and uh, and I think that's what's important. And that's I think that's what everybody needs to now also do more of because social media is becoming so much a part of your life. I know. That if you don't have a relationship with the people that you love away from social media, and if you have it only through, if you believe yeah. these things or believe, because that's their impression. They saw us like that. We saw it like she mm. said something and mm. I was like, you know, whatever. And then yeah. she was like, yeah. And I was like, mm. and I gave it back mm. to her. Like, because that's what sisters do, right? Exactly. If she says something, I'm going to give it back. Then she'll give it back. Yeah. Then I'll give it back. Yeah. Because that's how we pro, are. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I can relate to so, it. And then my mom will come in the middle like, stop it, you two. Yeah. We are at a Durga Puja. Behave yourself. And we're like, okay, mama, sorry. <laughs> then I'm like, no. But you know, like I was right. <laughs> yeah. You know, like. I know, I know. That's exactly how it was. And. I mean, I'm not going to stop behaving like that yeah. with my sister till I'm 55 or 75 or 85 because she's my sister. Exactly. So, I think that's that's all that matters. That you have to have your own space. And I never took it seriously. <laughs> I saw a few links after yeah. that. I stopped looking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, even today, there was like a few uh, weeks back, there were reports of you being married, you getting married. Do you still get really? those? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I went to Goa. Yeah, that you tied the knot in a secret ceremony. Because I have my toe ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, 
do you still get these questions Dude, that really came out of nowhere yeah i don't know where that news came out of it was so random, so random. it was like i had just oh, i was i was in goa and i love my we was enjoying the beach yeah, and yeah. everything and i and i didn't i didn't even from the corner of my mind in some think about, recess yeah. think that somebody will jump to that conclusion yeah. from this which just makes you realize that yeah. how crazy this world is becoming yeah. because the smallest thing can spark the largest I conversation know. one person starts everyone just follows no but they don't always follow yeah you know it just depends on what flight of fancy they yeah. want to take yeah. and then they just take off so i think it was just i i found it funny i was like again i don't pay attention mm-hmm. to too much of this i was just enjoying it and i was having a good time then i was scared i was like i had one more picture i was going to post mm-hmm. on my toes and i was like are now people will be like oh, again she's posting yeah. her feet or something but i was yeah. like but that's what i like to do i'm not going to stop myself from doing what i like on social media just because i'm worried about what people are going to think you know yeah. but at the same time i do think it's important to maintain a certain image but do you think women are more under the scanner 24/7 like recently we saw whatever is happening with sushmita sen and her actually being act- asked at every press conference ma'am aap shaadi kab kar rahe ho like salman being asked sir aap shaadi kab kar rahe ho but do you think for women it's even more focused on their personal lives than their professional lives like if someone's having a baby the first question is oh will you work after that that's that's a little derogatory that sexism according to me do you feel do you see that happening with yourself uh like i said i don't go according to public opinion and nobody in my family does yeah. either you know we've always had a very strong view of what we were going to do and how we're going to live our lives and it never had to do it was never influenced by public opinion so i think that's what's important and you're going to get asked these questions don't over analyze it it's it's it takes time for society to change and we are in that process yeah. to so celebrate the fact that today you're noticing this the fact that you are even becoming aware that mm. that you are uh, you know you're somebody in the media and you're like i don't know if i want to ask this girl that question mm. next time you will be like no why should i ask this girl so what if she's pregnant exactly usko kaam karna hai to karne do right i know so you're you're going to make that change already yeah. right yeah. right now you're he- hearing it you will have to see it and then Correct. you have to realize it the fact that you're realizing it is the biggest step i think for things to change and then one day maybe girls will not be asked will you work Hopefully, or won't yeah, you work yeah. or whether you know yeah. it shouldn't matter it's like it's not like if a girl has a baby she is told acha abhi aap ghar pe bhi kuch kaam mat karo yeah. ghar ka pura kaam karna padta hai yeah, na yeah exactly then, which is more work honestly according to me <laughs> to be a homemaker is much harder i know then yeah. it is to go to an office and spend 12 hours of your day outside the house in a nice office or wherever you are and then come back home in the evening and then do your thing It's exactly. much, much harder, harder to be at that. home for twelve hours, I know. <laughs> managing everybody around you. I know. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much, Tanisha, for joining in Rush Talks. It was a pleasure having you, and this was such a like a beautiful conversation that we had about everything under the sun. Yeah. So all the very best for all your future projects. Thank you for having me. You're thank you welcome. so much. It was a lovely conversation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.